Chapter 14 At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus, and said unto his servant, This is John the Baptist, he is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John, and bound him, and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them, and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger, and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body, and buried it, and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake, and gave the loaves to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat, and were filled, and they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship, and go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? And they, when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about, and brought unto him all that were diseased, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Here in chapter 14, we learn the details of the death of John the Baptist, and we see some other things. And what had happened was, Herod Antipas, who was the son of Herod the Great, the man who had rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem and many other things, at one particular point in time, Herod the Great was, uh, set, it was involved in 20 world record level kinds of building projects for which he ripped money out of the guts of Israel. And uh, the people hated him. And his sons were given smaller bits of territory to rule and Herod Antipas had the area up around the Sea of Galilee where this took place. And John the Baptist was taken into prison because he had had the guts to testify that Herod Antipas should not have taken, according to Jewish law, Herodias, who was his brother's brother Philip's wife, after Philip had died, should not have taken Herodias as his own wife. That was considered committing adultery. 
And Herod didn't like anybody speaking out against him. As most of these kings didn't. And so John was in prison. He wanted to kill him, but he was afraid that the people would consider him a prophet, and so he hesitated to do that. However, his birthday was there. He had a drinking party with all of his buddies, and his daughter, Herodias' daughter, danced in front of him, and she pleased him, and he promised with an oath, I will give you whatever she would ask, he said to her. Whatever you would ask, I'll give you. Now, her mother had coached her, Herodias, had coached the daughter that if he does this, because this was a common thing for these people to do, and they made oaths, and they kept them because of the pride. Oh, we can't break the word of the king. Oh, yeah, no matter what it is. And so what happened was, she said, give me the head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. That's what a charger is. The king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake, and so he wouldn't be embarrassed by them that sat with him by not keeping his word. He couldn't have the guts to say, you know, that wasn't the right thing for you to ask for. I'll give you something else. He commanded that John be beheaded and the head given to her. And he sent that John was beheaded. And then John's followers came and got his body and buried it. And they went and told Jesus. Now Jesus went into a place, desert place, and people followed him out of the city. They wanted their, their sick healed. And here we have the feeding of the 5,000. Now, a lot of people wonder about this. And they think, hey, you know, how could this really happen? I remember sitting at a dinner. This is many, many years ago at a friend's place down in Surrey, B.C. And there must have been 14 of us for dinner. And the lady of the house had not planned on all of us being there. People just sort of showed up. They were good friends. They were living in Vancouver area at the time. And we were all on our way to a special meeting. And we dropped by to visit. We were there at dinner. And she pulled out this chicken. And I'll tell you, that chicken looked pretty small to me. And we sat there and we had food. And we had that. We all had chicken. I mean, everybody took chicken. And when the dinner was over, there was, this, there was still plenty of chicken left. That chicken wouldn't have fed my family a six, but it fed 14 with people left over. I don't pretend I know how it happened. I just remember after the dinner was over, looking at that chicken and thinking, I remember him taking a whole bunch of chicken. I remember me taking a whole bunch of chicken. I remember my wife taking a whole bunch of chicken. I remember everybody taking a whole bunch of chicken. How come there's chicken left? I don't mean just bones. There was chicken meat. And so... There was, I've seen it happen. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. And the Savior did that. And here we have the story about him walking on the water. And Peter saying, Lord, if thou wilt bid me come unto thee. Peter wanted a commandment which gave him the courage to try. He stepped out and he, he did it. But then he got focused on the storm. Not the walking, but on the storm. And Jesus said to him in verse 31, O thou little faced, where, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they got into the ship, the wind ceased. And then they went to Genesaret. Now, Genesaret is a town on the northwest side, northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. And Capernaum's about five miles away, and Bethesda's about five miles away. And Chorazin, which I think I mistakenly said in a previous time, was a couple of miles away from Bethlehem. That's a couple of miles away from uh, Capernaum. These places are all within five or ten miles of one another. And these people basically would just bring people out to touch the hem of Jesus' uh, robe. And they were touched. These were people of great faith. 